Welcome to our latest installment of the Prophecy 2022 webinar series focusing on Simplicity 2022. In today's session, you'll learn how we are reducing time to solution by developing on important asks from our customers on Python scripting, improving extensibility and ease of use. My name is Justin Palmer and I'll be your moderator today. And joining me is Jimmy Felice, the product manager for Simplicity 2022. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a couple of housekeeping items. Firstly, enter your questions throughout the webinar by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom right of the screen. Your video window can be resized using the maximize icon in the top right or by manually dragging the screen to your desired size. And lastly, if you do have any issues with the tool, simply refresh your browser. This unified launch marks our second year of implementing a standard release cadence across the portfolio of products. There are three things I'd like to draw your attention to on this slide. Firstly, we're committed to driving continued investment and in innovation into our portfolio. Secondly, we've changed the on-premise product versioning from using individual product release numbers to a consistent 2022 version. We did this to help our customers understand what products were validated from an interoperability perspective, as well as making it easier to follow our release timelines. And lastly, we've integrated a low-code, no-code data engine across our portfolio, which is Prophecy Operations Hub. We started this last year and will continue to do so with these unified launches. If you did miss the webinar on Prophecy Operations Hub, we held this a couple of weeks ago. There is a replay available for you to watch to you know, catch up on what we covered in that session. So with that, I'll hand, hand over to you, Jimmy. Thanks, Justin. Um, as, you meant, as Justin mentioned, we are going through um, what we've released in our Simplicity 2022 release. Uh, but I did just sort of want to start with just some of the high level vision that we are looking at with our products and, and really then kind of tying it back to some of the things that we have been releasing. You know, as we kind of continue to, um, innovate on our products and bring them forward. Um, we do have a few key themes that we are working towards. Um, one of them is around the connected worker. So if you start thinking about the different ways that, um, and different roles in a business now or in a manufacturing site or a, in any kind of plant, um, you've got a lot of different roles. Each of those roles needs different types of information and um, needs it on a variety of different devices. So, you know, we're continuing to work towards, you know, really making sure that the end user does have the information they need to do their job. We're also focused on central management, you know, really looking at ways that we can help you manage your systems at scale. So, you know, deploying applications, uh, managing updates, those type of things, um, you'll see as themes um, in our coming versions as well. And um, kind of finally also looking at enterprise SCADA. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about simplicity in this regard, but um, you know, it does, we do have high scalability and that scale can be on single or multiple systems. You know, but again, the intent is to, to make sure that we provide you with the tools that um, allow you to um, work with these systems. In terms of just some of the high level themes with the Within that, um, you know, one of the key areas we're focused on is continuing to reduce time to solution. So that's really looking at, you know, how do we help you build out your application quickly, especially when you start talking about uh, the SCADA system. Um, also, similarly with the um, HMI or the visualization, um, we've got some cool new tools that um, Justin talked about in terms of Operations Hub as an example you know, which is really another way of visualizing that data. You know, so we'll continue to enhance our core simplicity visualization, but also, um, you know, we're finding and uh, bringing you guys uh, new ways of uh, visualizing that uh, data coming from your OT network. Um, central management, I talked a bit about already, you know, just again, really helping uh, from a configuration and deployment and maintenance perspective and empowering the connected worker through um, through these tools and ultimately looking at, again, making sure they get the information that's gonna help them do their jobs. In terms of um, the, the coming release, um, Simplicity 2022, which did just release um, in the last uh, couple of weeks here, 
Um, you know, as I kind of look at, um, you know, maybe grounding a little bit first on um, some of the capabilities that we do have with Simplicity. Simplicity is a client server HMI SCADA solution, which implies ultimately we can collect data and help you visualize that data. You know, so we do have some unique capabilities um, in terms of um, operations, some core functions that you, you know, you're going to expect in a solution like this. You know, we do have things like alarm management, um, um, connectivity to different devices, high availability solutions. And one I'll talk about a little bit today as well, um, you know, adding some cloud capabilities as well. Um, development tools, um, you know, again, really things that are gonna help you build out your system faster, including things like libraries, as well as um, something that Simplicity has done really well for a long time is it does have a model-based approach or an object-oriented approach that you can use for your development, you know, so leveraging templates and instances, you know, so if you are doing something larger scale with repeatable uh, screens or repeatable objects, um, you know, we really do help provide a lot of those tools. It's very extensible um, and we'll get into some new things we've done there. Um, open standards. Um, one of the things with Simplicity is um, it does scale very well. So it can scale from a very small um, application, you know, with just a handful of tags all the way to an enterprise level um, SCADA solution with half a million points as an example. You know, so, and it does that with a small footprint um, as well. Um, and then, um, you know, security is something we do take um, very seriously. Um, so we do provide some tools like um, a secure deployment guide to really help guide you in the best way to architect a, a solution so that it is secure. Um, we do implement secure by design as part of our development strategy. And um, we also um, leverage some standards for um, vulnerability response, um, including things like ISA 2701, as well as IEC 62443. So again, just some things that are, um, you know, I wanted to kind of make sure um, everyone was aware of um, with simplicity. Um, if I look at just some of the previous releases that we've worked on, kind of even looking at some of the themes um, we've been talking about, you know, just I'm not going to go into these in detail. We do have some, you know, information on these previous releases. But, you know, some of the, again, highlighting just some of the key things. Um, you know, we've been doing some things around, again, helping you build out your database faster, you know, including a new builder from OPC UA that can help automatically build out your database, leveraging OPC UA sources as an example. Um, you know, we continue to leverage our object-oriented approach we also recently, um, in our previous release, um, did some integration with our operations hub solution. You know, so you'll see a diagram or a screenshot at the bottom there, where we're actually able to combine some of our dashboarding capabilities in operations hub and embed existing simplicity displays in those um, operations hub displays in context. Meaning, I, I can make it so that as I select an item within the map, for example, it'll change the uh, HMI screen I'm looking at in context of, um, of that map as an example. So again, you know, we're always um, trying to bring you guys new um, ways of uh, helping solve your problems. Um, but, you know, that, that is one of the key things is um, when you combine our portfolio, you know, we can really create some unique solutions to help solve some of those problems. So with the Simplicity 2022 release, um, again, we did um, focus on some of our core themes, um, including reducing time to solution. So our number one ask for um, Simplicity through our idea portal, um, and I will um, you know, pause here and say, hey, if you, if you do have ideas or wanna see existing ideas that other customers have submitted that you can vote on, you can go to our support site. There'll be a little light bulb symbol there that, where you can, uh, go into our idea portal and either view or submit new ideas. Um, in that system, um, Python was actually our number one asked for item of all the ideas um, in terms of, um, of votes as well. So again, um, you can um, leverage that tool if you do want to submit something. 
Um, one of the really key advantages of Python is its large development community and available solutions and libraries that are out on, all over the internet if you do a search for them. You know, by, by basically by leveraging those existing libraries and solutions, you can actually use this as a way of, you know, building out your solution faster. In terms of uh, total cost of ownership, um, you know, one of the key things that we did add is our cloud infrastructure support. So you're able to now run Simplicity in the cloud on premises or both uh, in, a, in a hybrid manner. And I'll get go through some examples there as well. Um, and then um, in terms of, uh, you know, just with every release, as mentioned, you know, we do try to listen to what our customers are asking for. So we also did some other enhancements with our alarming system in terms of the visualization that you can leverage in your existing applications as well. So again, um, you know, Simplicity 2022, we just released it um, in the last couple of weeks. And um, you're, you know, if you are um, one of our, our acceleration plan customers, you can go to the portal and um, down and request um, an upgrade for that as well. Looking at the Python scripting, you know, as mentioned, um, it is the number one um, item, you know, just in terms of um, what it is, it is a high level programming language. It's pretty much the, the language that most developers now learn as they come out of university. You know, so there's a really big advantage, you know, as you know, we talk to some of our customers and our integrators, you know, the reality is that, you know, a lot, you know, with some of the tr traditional languages like basic and things like that, a lot of new hires aren't actually familiar with that. So a really key advantage of leveraging Python is the fact that you've, you've got a larger community of developers that can take advantage of it. Um, it is, as mentioned, there's a lot of tools out there that are available to really help you from an extensibility perspective. Um, we'll go through a few examples of that as well. And, um, you know, one of the other kind of items of note here is that um, it is really the tool of choice for uh, data scientists. So one of the big advantages of Python is its use for analytics. So kind of looking at sort of the way we've integrated Simplicity and, uh, and the Python, um, what we've done is we've we just as we do with our existing um, Visual Basic and C Sharp scripting, um, it is part of the event manager. So you can essentially trigger a script based on an event. Event could be a data change, it could be a manual event, um, so, you know, or something that happens on a time basis. You know, but really what it lets you do is. Um, when you do create an event, you can still use the classic languages, but we do have Python available there as well. We did make it so that um, we do have a, an IntelliSense editor. So what that really means is you're able to kind of see the functions auto-populate as you type them out. So it saves you some time looking for um, um, the functions you can use. It does provide access to all of the Simplicity APIs so, um, you know, we've extended our APIs to make them available to the Python engine. So all those things, if you are doing things like, you know, manipulating data on a point, creating alarms manually, uh, any of those things that you're doing today, um, we, you will also have access from the Python engine as well. Um, one other kind of key thing, um, you know, I spoke a bit about Simplicity's object-oriented capabilities in terms of leveraging classes and object instances. Um, you know, one of the things you can do as part of these um, Python scripts is you can associate them to a class. So what that means, if you've created, a, you know, an object type for a piece of equipment, uh, a motor, a pump, whatever it happens to be, um, you can assign a, uh, based on an event, a script to it as well. So a really common use case is, and I, and I do have it below there is, you know, you can actually, write an analytic in Python, leveraging the real-time data, leveraging the historical data, have it, you know, come out with a result and tie that result to that object. You know, so again, you know, this is a way you can do um, some of that real-time analytics within your system as well. Um, and, and we do provide things like, um, we do have event handlers for common configuration. So if you want to trigger um, 
scripts off of a predefined function we have in our system. They're available. Um, and we've also included a set of really common libraries that are used by Python programmers. You know, whether it's for things like uh, the analytics, like we talked about, communications, um, you know, libraries to do REST interfaces. You know, there's just a really large wealth of uh, things available in the market for that. And we're providing some of those out of the box for you. In terms of some of the use cases, I talked about analytics. Um, you know, we've seen it used for things like custom alarm handling. If you want to uh, put a little more logic behind some of your alarm generation, um, you could expose data through through interfaces like REST or MQTT if you want. Uh, interface to other data sources, whether it's a CMMS system, a database. You know, so there's really, I mean, it's really open ended here. <laughs> there's there's a ton of uh, capability that comes with, um, you know, being having access to Python within the uh, Simplicity engine. Uh, I spoke a bit earlier about, um, you know, one of the things we've done is qualify the system to run in the cloud. And, and the idea behind some of these diagrams here is you'll see, you know, when you start thinking of it more from a solution perspective, you know, typically our simplicity system is deployed with historians, um, as well as things like our web-based um, visualization and, and operations hub for that matter. So, you know, the idea here is that, you know, some of the things that we have tested and documented is just how to handle different scenarios of whether, you know, the SCADA stays on premise, feeding data to the cloud or, the SCADA itself is in the cloud, or in some cases, you might have instances of the SCADA on premise, you know, looking after point solutions and then have an aggregated enterprise view in the cloud. You know, so again, this really opens up just a lot of flexibility in terms of, um, you know, if you do want to leverage cloud infrastructure, just ways of architecting it, you know, in the most effective manner. So what some of our customers have been doing with this is, they might have the most time critical systems on premise and then, you know, put, you know, some of the more overview level things in the cloud um, and then anywhere in between. You know, some of the advantages and why some of our customers have asked for this is, you know, is it really comes down to managing that infrastructure. So if you can put things in the cloud, um, it saves you on managing your own data centers. Um, you know, alleviates, you know, the costs associated to the hardware and keeping things up to date, keeping windows up to date. And then, you know, obviously the other advantage of a cloud application is, you know, more broadly making those views available remotely, you know, so you're only hitting one location. You're not having to put firewalls in every single site just to get remote access through a web browser to the actual site. So again, we have in our, our documentation is online in the G digital documentation site. And we do have um, a section there for um, how to architect um, or different architectural options for the cloud that you can look at. Um, in terms of um, kind of, you know, layering on simplicity with the release, um, we talked a bit about operations hub already and um, as Justin, Justin mentioned, there is a uh, webinar that you can also download or view off our website um, talking about all the things you can do with Operations Hub. Um, but kind of in a nutshell, what Operations Hub is, is it's a rapid application development environment for creating web applications. And those web applications can vary for in terms of uh, what you're doing with them. But, you know, one of the things, um, you know, some of the key use cases we look at are things like dashboards, getting higher level views and KPIs of your OT information. Um, and, and it has the ability to connect to our simplicity system, connect to historian. It can connect to relational databases, get, you know, data from MQTT sources, you know, so it's a a lot of different data sources that you can um, get data into operations hub with and create those displays, you know, to solve your problems, whether it happens to be, um, you know, just getting insights into how things are running in the plant or, you know, whatever other KPIs that you're measuring. So one of the things that we did with this release as well is um, the ability to embed 
simplicity web space inside of operations hub with context and i kind of mentioned this earlier as well you know so really what this does is allow you to combine you know some of the more traditional um, dashboard type views with your hmi scada so a common use case is i could have a map from the map i can have you know the locations i select the location I see there's an alarm in a location, I select it, it brings me right to the HMI that's gonna allow me to do the control I need to. You know, so it really can help provide that unified view of multiple systems and, um, and get you those insights. And, and, and an example of using it that way is something that a lot of our customers are starting to look at, which is centralizing operations. You know, so if I do have multiple, either, it could either be multiple sites, you know, if you are distributed across, um, you know, have different locations, or it could be just a larger facility and you have a SCADA solution per, you know, area of the plant, you can still have those and then create that aggregated view with, um, you know, and, and again, flexibility here in terms of what's where, but you can get that central view of your operations. And really what that does, um, if you think about it, is, you know, you can start doing some things like if you do have different systems with different interfaces, you can create that single entry point. And um, also, you know, by accessing these uh, different systems um, from one location, you can start creating a more unified view or consistent view for the operator as well. You know, so some of the, the capabilities there, again, um, you can host the web space widget inside of operations hub to create some of those, you know, uh, com combined displays. Um, it does do context switching and really all that means is, hey, if I'm looking at, if I click on this, you know, open that type of thing. Um, so you can associate screens to, you know, different actions within operations hub and ultimately create that mashup view, right? Um, so if you do have multiple systems, you can again have that single point of entry to really view all that information from a, a single application. Um, a big part of any um, SCADA product is our is a historian. Um, so Simplicity does still offer its SQL logging, but you know one of the things we do encourage a lot of our customers to look at is our um, prophecy historian, and it really is a great complement to Simplicity in in the sense of it has a, a incredible scalability as well. So you could use it as a local historian, as well as, um, you know, an enterprise level historian where, you, as you can see, you can get up to hundred million tags. And, you know, some of the improvements we've done um, in this release on our uh, historian integration is, look, is um, really the collector throughput is one of them. So that's, um, you know, the ability to really, as you can see there, capture about 150,000 tags per second from Simplicity if needed. You know, so very high scale, very high performance. Um, it also just recently, um, Historian has also added Python as well there. So you could actually use Python as a, as a Python based collector. So you can actually do calculations on the fly as the data goes into Historian. So a lot of flexibility, especially when you combine the power of both you know, simplicity with the um, the historian. And, you know, and, and as a note there, and uh, many of you probably know, um, we do provide an essentials version of historian with every simplicity. Um, otherwise, you can start to look at the benefits of a, you know, full standard or enterprise historian, depending on your needs. Um, and, and this, again, is really just to highlight that flexibility of um, just like I talked about with Simplicity, you know, where you can have um, that site SCADA as well as the enterprise SCADA. Historian kind of has that same concept. You know, I can have it at that OT layer all the way to the cloud as well. You know, so, again, a lot of architectural flexibility with um, the overall solution. Um, and just another note, um, we do, you know, I talked about analytics in terms of Python. So obviously that that's one path. Um, if you want to get into, you know, a more packaged uh, way of doing um, analytics, we also offer our CSENT solution, which also released in a, our 2022 version. 
Um, so something you can look, again, go back and look at our um, webinar that we did do on that as well to get more details. But ultimately what this allows you to do is um, really helps you with optimizing your process, you know, whether it's loop tuning or just looking at um, from an analysis perspective, uh, you know, how, how did the different tags relate to each other? If I, you know, in terms of, is there a relationship? If I change this, how does it impact that? So again, just something to look at, um, you know, as looking at it from an overall solution perspective, you know, it's another piece that is integrated in with our um, portfolio. So in conclusion, um, you know, just kind of highlighting some of the things um, with uh, Simplicity, you know, we do do a lot of things. Um, again, it, we've provided a lot of uh, tools to really help you build faster. Um, it's very high performance, high scale, including the HMI. We do provide some tools for doing things like high performance HMI. Um, you know, we do have a security policy in place, like I talked about before, that, you know, we're just trying to help reduce the threat of cyber attacks and, you know, have fast response for you guys when things do happen. Um, you know, looking at the complementary solutions like um, Operations Hub, Historian, to really help you know, with uh, improved decision making across your process and a lot of flexibility in terms of um, the architecture as well as the visualization um, with the system. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Justin and he's going to uh, bring us to the uh, questions as well. Thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate you sharing all these updates today. There's been a lot of work clearly been done by the team. As a reminder for our viewers, please submit your questions via the Q&A icon at the bottom right of your window. And with that, let's jump into Q&A.